All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to go over the current tech landscape and how did we get here to the point where a lot of engineers, especially beginners, are struggling to find jobs. So if you guys don't know, there's a big epidemic where there's a lot of beginner engineers who have college degrees, master's degrees, um, 10 certifications, and they cannot find a job. So I want to go over what has happened and what you guys can do right now to remediate this issue if you guys are in this particular position. So let's go straight into this and, and I'll, let's go and explain it. All right, guys, so welcome back. So I just want to quickly go over the process of what sort of occurred um, in terms of why are people struggling to find jobs. So let's kind of just jump straight into this. So um, we're going to start with 2020. So if you guys remember, 2020 was an interesting year. This was, as you guys know, the pandemic year, um, and this year caused a lot of companies, their stocks skyrocketed in terms of tech companies in specific. So when that happens, when tech companies, their stock goes up in value, they want to what in turn? They want to hire people. So tech companies at this point, they want to go and hire people. So if they want to hire people, there is a subset of people who um, go through university um, so they have, you know, a four-year, they have a four-year degree. So you have these individuals who have four-year degrees with um, a computer science major, a computer information systems major, tons of different majors. But there's these sub, there's a subset of these people who have a four-year degree. There's another subset of people who are self-taught. So the self-taught crowd are just people who, who literally just self-taught themselves programming, um, networking, cloud topics, cybersecurity, right? And then you have the people who um, go through boot camps. So you have these sort of talent pool, right? Um, but at this period in 2020, they wanted to hire like crazy. So they didn't even care if you had a degree. They didn't care um, at all. So they're like, okay, we're going to go with even self-taught people and boot camps. Jump in. We're ready to hire you. And they were hiring quite high salaries at this point because um, um, inflation rates or um, interest rates were quite high. I um, mean, when interest rates are high, um, or sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken, interest rates were low. And with the interest rates being low, it's, it was very easy for them to hire individuals because it's basically free money in the eyes of the companies. So in this period, a lot of hiring, everyone was happy. You know, everyone was finding jobs. Um, it was a great time. And then that slowly sort of withered around 20, um, 20, 22. So this is where interest rates started to dip, stock market started to crash, companies started to do what? Layoffs. But before we get to that, in this particular period here, everyone noticed people were getting jobs, it was all good, and then TikTok came up as well. And with TikTok, everyone was like, oh, you can work this remote job, you can literally do nothing, and keep in mind, this was in the rise of remote work, right? Right? So everyone was like, hey, you can do whatever you want. You can work from home. You can make this amazing salary. Tech market is amazing. You guys have to jump into tech. Tech is the move. Tech is, you know, the future. We have to, everything's going to be remote. And then everyone with, from all different degrees, you know, people with math degrees, people with nursing degrees, history degrees, lawyers, uh, doctors would say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going into tech. I'm doing tech. Tech is the wave. So now you have a, a huge pool of people who are just newbies wanting to get into tech right now. So you have this huge pool that are, you know, within, this is, you know, probably like 2021. They're like, hey, I see this. I want to get into tech. Tech is the move. It's interesting. You get paid well. It's remote. I can work anywhere I want. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into tech. So this, this is sort of what happened. Once the stock market crashed, though, however, you have this big pool of new people who are looking for work, I'm ready and we're super excited going to boot camps, you know, already in, in hyped. And then there's then the stock market crashed and then the wave of layoffs came, right? But still, this was an ever growing group, you know, more and more people because of TikTok, on YouTube, everyone was showing their lifestyle of the remote tech lifestyle and that kind of inflated the market with a lot of newbies. So now you have a lot of people who have um, potentially have, you know, a degree, they have certs. And they are have um, no experience, right? Most likely, or maybe very little. So you have this advent of people, um, and they were 
you know, these people were actually getting hired in the 2020 range. But now, as going into 2022 with the layoffs and everything, that cut the market and then all the newbies um, could not find jobs because all the senior engineers who were getting cut were the ones who were able to find jobs again, most likely. Some of them couldn't even find jobs, but the senior engineers were the ones who were able to find jobs because if there's a pool of senior engineers, right, these are the senior guys. I'm going to make I put like a box over their head to show you that these are seniors. The seniors were able to find jobs, but then you still have this ever-growing pool of, of, of beginners growing and growing, um, and then you also have the market flooded with seniors. So what happens here? You get the point where you go to LinkedIn to apply, right? Um, and when you go to LinkedIn, it says 100 plus applicants, right? 100 plus applicants on LinkedIn. And by the way, this is probably could be 500, 600, 700 because it's filled with these individuals who are beginners um, who try to jump on the, the wave when it was popping. Um, and then they go into here and they're struggling to find jobs, right? So this is the big issue. And then obviously going into 2025 right now, this has ever since grown um, and it's just ever since getting bigger and bigger with more and more people wanting to get into tech. However, this beginner group is kind of in a bad spot now because there there is another group, right, from the people who graduated in 2024, right, with new degrees, right? They're like, hey, I want to get a job and those people are struggling to find jobs as well. So what is the issue here? First, the issue is the people, wh what are jobs looking for now? In 2025, they're looking for skills. They're looking for experience. They're looking for someone with skills and experience. Um, those That's really all they're looking for now because back then they're like, hey, you, you have this certification? Okay, we're ready to hire you. Oh, you know, you have a college degree? No, no experience? We're ready to hire you. But now in today's market, you're going to need the skills that the job is looking for because they don't want to spend, you know, six months training you. Right, they don't have time for that. Money is tight right now, especially with high interest rates. They don't want to. They don't want to spend. They want you to be a producer asap. And the only way they can do that is looking for people who have skills and experience. Otherwise, they're not even going to waste their time. So, if you're in this group who maybe joined in 2022 or after, who are who is a beginner, you know, went through a college degree boot camp or self taught, and is struggling, you need to spend the majority of your time on skills and experience. But then you're going to say, hey, wait, how do I get experience? How am I going to get experience, right? Um, if you want to get experience, you can do projects. You can do free work, right? These are the easiest things you can do. And you say, hey, I don't want to work for free. That's up to you. That's you. That's your prerogative. If you want to get experience, you're going to have to do it for free sometimes. The same with project. That That's your time. That's also going to be... You're not getting paid for to do your own projects, um, or you can start your like your own little startup or whatever, right? There's a lot of different things you can do to get experience, um, but these are the, the the key things. But in terms of like how do I get a job now? You're gonna have to be a little bit more creative. Number one, I would say personal branding. This is probably the highest leverage thing you can do if you want to get into tech is personal branding. Um, if you are seen as an expert in a particular field, i.e software engineering, cloud engineering, um, a lot of jobs are going to want to hire you because they already know, like, and trust you. For example, Network Chuck, I'm pretty sure he has no issue finding jobs because people already know, like, and trust him. He's already a public figure. Um, this is the easiest way to sort of leverage. If you don't want to put yourself out there, totally fine. Um, but just know that this is the highest leverage activity you can do if you want to land a job in tech in 2025. The next thing you can do is seek mentorship. Um, this is another thing you can do. Um, and what, what I mean by mentorship is look for someone who's exactly in the position you want them, that you want to be in. Let's say you know someone who's a network engineer, a software engineer, a cloud engineer. Find someone in this particular position and literally just say, hey, can you mentor me? Can you t tell me exactly what I need to do? You know, what do I need to learn? What do you do day to day? And stick to them like a like a like a glue because they're going to give you the intel. And then the more you communicate with this individual, the more information they're going to give you, the better you're going to get. The more you're going to understand. And uh, with time, you're just going to almost talk like them, be like them, and then you're going to be able to land a job because they already have the intel for you. So seek mentorship. This is probably the most high 
highly important thing you can do um, is find someone who's in the field and talk with them daily, have them give you advice, um, and find someone who's actually genuine who can actually tell you where to what to do. And if you need help, there's a link in my description. I can show you how to, if you're interested in getting to network engineering, I can show you how to do that. So click the link down below if you're interested in that. But mentorship is a very important thing. Um, another thing you can do is you can work on getting connections. Um, um, connections are one of the most important things you can do um, when it comes to getting a job because it's about who you know, not what you know at the end of the day. If you know the CEO of a company, wink, wink, you're probably going to get the job, right? Is it nepotism? Sure. But this is how you can leverage nepotism for a job. Does it suck that the way that the way it is? Sure, but people like to hire who they know, um, who they know, like and trust over a random person. And referrals, can, i.e., connections, are the easiest way to to get yourself through the door. So I know you probably never heard of these ideas, but these are probably the the best things you can do in today's market: is personal branding, getting mentorships, and getting connections. If you can get these three things in order you're going to be able to land a job because this is what this is how you're going to stand out and stand out from who? From this particular crowd. The crowd of newbie engineers who have no experience and are just f like sending a th thousands of, of, of applications through LinkedIn um, and don't have either a personal brand, don't have anyone to talk to who's in the field or have literally no connections. But how do I get connections? Talk to people. And really, if you personal brand yourself, you're going to get connections either way. Um, but yeah, and the best way to get connections and the best way to have people loan, know, like, and trust you is to help them. How do you help them? Be a value to them. How can you be a value? Do things for them by helping them. If you know someone who's a cloud engineer, say, hey, I would love to help you with this project or find a creative way to meet someone and help them. And if you help them, there's a very high chance whenever there's a job opportunity in their particular company, they're going to ask you, do you know anyone who's a ex engineer will looking to hire them? This person would recommend you for that position. And then boom, you have a very high chance of passing the interview. So that's how you can get a job in 2025 are these aspects, right? Um, you know, these are the, these are the ways getting more certifications, getting more degrees is not the move right now. Right now, you got to be more unique, um, and these are the most unique ways to, to, to sort of leverage your skills and get a job. But obviously, you have to have the skills, like we mentioned before. The skills are the most important thing and the experience, right? Um, but that comes from doing projects and, 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 and exercises and, and labs and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you want to land a job, personal brand, mentorship, connections, and also, you know, there's more like interview prepping and improving your social skills and knowing how to apply for jobs, who to reach out to, um, all that kind of stuff. But these kind of all stem from that. So hopefully that makes sense and, and kind of sheds light on the issue that a lot of people are, have been facing in terms of, you know, the, the 2020 craze and how easy it was to get a job to now 2022 where all the layoffs hit to now 2025 where it's like you have a lot of individuals who are new to tech who can't find jobs because they're all doing the same thing. They're literally all doing the same thing. They're all getting a degree, right, at WG or wherever university. Um, and then they're all getting like, you know, eight certifications, right? You got to be more unique than that. Why don't you document the process of you getting the certifications, right? Why don't you seek a mentor who's actually an ex-engineer and see what they do day to day? Because the certifications and the degree does not mimic what you do day to day as an ex-engineer. It just doesn't, right? So hopefully you guys um, found some information from this video. And like I said before, if you guys need any mentorship um, or need advice in terms of landing a job in tech in 2025, um, feel free to uh, message me or click the link down below and I can show you exactly how to leverage sort of these skills um, and be able to land a job in 2025. So um, thank you guys so much for listening to this video. Um, I really do appreciate you guys' time. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you guys want to see more videos like this, um, feel free to you know comment down below because this is more of a unique style that I wanted to, to see if you guys like. Um, but with that being said, everyone, 
Thank you guys so much for your time and hope you have, hope you guys have a good rest of your day and peace.